The two clans of Shimazu and Sekigahara are engaged in a terrible and scary war. Shimazu Toyohisa is a brave and strong samurai who's not afraid to go after the head of the leader of the Sekigahara to seal his victory. He cuts through the enemy army and finally reaches the commander, who's protected by foot soldiers with spears. Toyohisa doesn't care about the foot soldiers, he just wants to end the war by killing the enemy commander. So he jumps over the soldiers and tries to attack him. With smiles on their faces, the soldiers use their spears to stab him in the air. Unable to move further, Toyohisa pulls out a gun and shoots the commander, forcing the foot soldiers to help their superior. In a bid to survive, Toyohisa wanders around in the woods by himself while heavily injured. In the blink of an eye, he meets Mirasaki, the Grim Reaper, in a hall full of doors, he starts to yell about going back but is pulled through one of the doors, taking him into a different place. Now in this new world, Toyohisa is still very hurt and confused as to where he is. But two young elves, seeing him, come to his aid. They take him to the Drifter's village, a village meant for people who have arrived from a foreign world. When he wakes up, he sees a warrior who introduces himself as Nobunaga. Hearing this, Toyohisa sees him as an imposter since the Nobunaga he knew had died 18 years ago. While still trying to process that, another drifter arrives, who introduces himself as Yoichi. Toyohisa recognizes this name as someone from over 400 years ago. He finds this harder to believe. Meanwhile, a group of people known as Octobris send a girl to spy on the drifters, fearing that they would be the end of the world. In the elf camp, the father of the two elves who had earlier helped Toyohisa scolds them for associating with the drifters. He reiterates the fact that if the lord of the territory and his army find out about it, they would be in trouble. Shortly after, the lord of the territory arrives with his soldiers to take his portion of the harvest from the elves. Toyohisa and the drifters are sleeping, when suddenly they wake up to see a fire in the distant woods. Seeing this, he asks where that is, and is told by Nobunaga that it is the dwelling of the elves who might probably be under attack from bandits. Hearing this, he runs toward the location of the fire and is accompanied by Nobunaga and Yoichi. On his way, he meets the two young elves who helped him before. They're hurt as they were being chased by men on horses. They almost get close to the elves when Nobunaga leaps in the air and shoots a bullet through the helmet of one of the soldiers. After this, Nobunaga slices through the rest, paying the children back for saving his life. He charges to the elf camp to save the other elves from being punished for helping a drifter. One elf tries to explain that it was two kids who did it, but the lord doesn't care and starts to go on a killing spree. Getting there, Nobunaga comes up with the strategy of setting the entire wheat field on fire to make tax and food unavailable for the lord who has come. Then, Toyohisa charges at the soldiers, slicing them one by one until he comes face to face with the Lord, who is now guarded by lesser soldiers. However, the Lord steps forward to do battle with Toyohisa, who wastes no time in pinning him down and continuously smashes his head with his scabbard. He picks up a sword and gives it to a crying elf whose son had just been killed. They waste no time getting their revenge. In this world, not all drifters are as brave as Toyohisa, but one of them is known as the Black King. He leads an army of monsters and bad drifters in a war against people with the goal of eradication and slaughter of all mankind, naming themselves the end. The Black King prepares to attack the Kingdom of Carnides and annihilate the humans. They will put up a wall around the Kingdom of Carnides forcing people to leave. The Master of the Octobrist, a group of magicians whose job is to keep all drifters safe and work together against the end, is also within the walls of the kingdom. Seeing the Black King's army preparing to attack, he warms the warriors of Carnides but they underestimate the might of the end, stating that the freaks cannot do a thing. He asks the commanders of the Carnides army to give two drifters who have been trapped in their dungeon the chance to lead the army. They decline, stating that the two men are old and know nothing. Shortly after, the Black King attacks, firstly sending in warriors who try to scale the walls but are intercepted by the skilled archers of the Carnides who stand on top of the walls. Unfortunately, they are wiped out by the enemy dragon who breathes down fire on them. The dragon ends up being taken down by a fighter jet driven by a drifter. Realizing that they have been subdued, the soldiers of Carnides flee their positions, making it easy for the end to take over the kingdom. The Grand Master of the Octobrists is unable to help and flees in a carriage toward Toyohisa and his friends, hoping they will help him in this war against the Black King. When the Black King finds out that the drifters he came to kill have run away, he tells his soldiers to chase them and kill them. Almanu, one of the Octobrists, is scouting the land of the elves when Toyohisa and his group catch her. She tells them what the Black King and the End are planning. Nobunaga, the Demon King, is very angry. He wants Toyohisa to lead an army and take control of the state, thus winning the war. Almanu finds it strange that Nobunaga's suggestion sounds appealing. However, the elves are scared that they will be attacked by the king for killing his men and not paying their taxes. After much deliberation, they decide that the only way to survive this is through a rebellion 
but the drifters can't understand elven language. Almanu helps them with a charm making them understand each other. Toyohisa convinces the elves to take back their country and free themselves from subjugation. The elves' lands have been taken by the kingdom of Ort, who did the same with to the dwarfs and made them slaves and miners in their own countries. Nabunaga asks Toyohisa what they should do, and Toyohisa suggests that they let the enemy soldiers in. The elves evacuate the village like Toyohisa had suggested. When the soldiers arrive, they find it empty and wonder where the elves might have gone to. Toyohisa, Nabunaga, and Yoichi teach the elves different ways to fight. But Yoichi seems to be making more progress with the elves as they prove to be natural-born archers. While the elves get ready to take back their village from the soldiers, one of them tells Toyohisa that their women have been taken and kept in the palace, being the reason they can't reproduce. Toyohisa tells them that the battle doesn't end with just taking back their village but taking the palace and freeing their women. At nightfall, Toyohisa leads the elves in an attack on the soldiers. He lures them to various locations where the elves shoot them with arrows. Then, Nobunaga leads the elf in a brutal offensive that would involve them sacrificing the village that has held them captive. When the soldiers are gathered in one place, the elves shoot fire arrows around them to trap them in a fiery circle enabling the elves to endlessly shoot arrows. Almost wiped out, Toyohisa dives into the fiery circle and cuts off the head of the commander, as this signifies victory to him. Meanwhile, the soldiers who manage to escape are intercepted by Yoichi and her group of elves who lay in ambush, waiting for the soldiers to come. In the palace, the king gets word that the soldiers are back and he goes to welcome them. When the gates are opened, he sees Toyohisa and his men there, they had dressed up as returning soldiers to take over the palace. While going to the dungeon, Toyohisa and the elves met some soldiers who dropped their weapons to surrender. As a noble samurai warrior, Toyohisa tells the elves that they shouldn't hurt any soldiers who are giving up, but quickly changes his mind when he sees how the soldiers have hurt the female elves. Toyohisa gets so angry and says he will pull them up by the roots. G gets them all together and tells the archers to aim their bows. Nabunaga doesn't want Toyohisa to do something that goes against his beliefs, Killing the soldiers is his job and no one else should do it, knocking Toyohisa out. Babanaga sends the female elves back to their families and villages with a letter that signifies that the elves should join them in rebellion if they want to be free from oppression. When the elves get this letter, they are upset and ready to start a revolution. Nabunaga thinks that Toyohisa would be the best king to lead this revolution. Toyohisa rejects him, he just wants to set up a village council for the elves so they can lead themselves. Meanwhile, Nobunaga tries to make a copy of his gun so that he can be ready for the war and revolution he started. But the elves' blacksmiths can't do it. They tell him, though, that only a skilled dwarf blacksmith can do that. In the meantime, elves from other villages are getting together to get ready for the revolution, as Toyohisa and the others teach them how to fight in different ways. Toyohisa is in charge of swordsmanship, Yoichi is in charge of archery, and Nobunaga isn't concerned about the elves' training as he thinks they can't comprehend what he has to teach them. He is more determined to find a way to make his gun. Later that night, as they sit, Toyohisa is restless and has a strange feeling that something is sickening as a bloody battle is coming for them. Right after that, they realize that two bad drifters, part of the end sent by the Black King have come to attack them. Toyohisa and Yoichi step out to fight them, while Nabunaga helps the elves to escape into the forest. They both decide to take one of the ends each. When the fight begins, Toyohisa gets trapped in a circle of fire, created by the end he battles with. In the middle of a fierce and fiery attack on Toyohisa, Olimni casts a spell that makes a stone shield appear in front of him, giving him a chance to escape the fire with her. Toyohisa is impressed that she can do sorcery too, but she makes him know that the stone wall is the only magic she can do, further stating that she has just two of the charms for the spell left. Toyohisa thanks her for saving his life, but she tells him to face the battle since it is the Octobrist's job to keep the drifters safe. He says that a man doesn't always get another chance to say thank you if he doesn't do it right away. Yoichi continues to do battle with the end she had stepped up to face but his skills seem ineffective compared to it. He gets worried that his arrows aren't having any effect on it even after shooting him in various vital points. On the other hand, Toyohisa continues his battle with the evil drifter. He asks Almanu to aid him with her last two charms. Firstly, she sets up a wall behind him, and on his orders, she casts another spell, allowing him to use a horizontal wall to launch himself at the enemy, throwing him into a well. Toyohisa gets confused as he realizes that this enemy is a woman, who had disguised as a man to battle. On Yoich's side, her arrows continue to have no effect on the evil drifter she fights. The elves help her out by shooting arrows at an enemy that never falls down. In the heat of battle, with frustration running high for Yoichi, 
the Grandmaster and the drifters he had escaped with, arrive. They unveil a gatling gun which they use in shooting down the enemy. Babanaga continues to question the Grandmaster about who he is. When the Grandmaster reveals his real name, he recognizes it as someone powerful. However, upon Toyohis's arrival, he doesn't seem to have heard the name before. Talking further, they all realize that they were brought into this world the same way. The Grandmaster explains to them the purpose of the ends. At that moment, they ask Toyohisa about the end he had just fought. He reveals that he threw her into the well and head-butted her, without killing her. Shocked, they rush down to the well and realize that she had already escaped. The Grandmaster gets angry and yells at Toyohisa for not killing her. However, he is unbothered about their show of anger and tells them that taking the head of a woman would only bring him shame. This makes the Grandmaster question his principles as he feels that the end should be dealt with no matter their gender or background. Nobunaga is thrilled at the sight of the Gatling gun. He says the device would be able to annihilate a massive force by just placing it in specific locations. He wants it for himself, but the Grandmaster declines his request, saying that the Gatling gun is a weapon of the future, with no means of making it in the present. Earlier, Nobunaga had asked Almanu to get him a large amount of sulfur which he would use to make gunpowder. The sulfur finally arrives, happy and elated. He suggests to the elves that they would have to free the dwarves, as a first step to establishing multiple nations, each nation governing themselves and their military power belonging under the leadership of Toyohisa. Back in the elf camp, Toyohisa makes Nobunaga's earlier intention of freeing the dwarves known to the elves. However, they do not like this, stating that the dwarves never helped them when Ort took over their country. Hearing them, Toyohisa insists on doing it alone if they do not want to help. The dwarves contemplate and decide to help him since he had saved their lives. They also feel this is a way to finally throw away the grudge they have against the dwarves and join forces to take back their country. Fortunately for Nobunaga, the Gatling gun is left with him to use. When they arrive at the castle where the dwarves have been kept, Nobunaga directs the elves to throw in bombs which he had made using the ingredients he had gathered. The bombs aid in destabilizing the enemy defenses just enough for Toyohisa and the elves to attack them. The soldiers at the watchtower, hearing the screams of their comrades, are terrified as they wonder what's going on. Yoichi blows them up as she fires an arrow with a bomb attached, pleasing Nobunaga. While they advance towards the castle, they are blocked by large-looking guards in full armor who claim to be the Armored Guards Corps of Ort. Toyohisa analyzes them and comes to the conclusion that they are slow. He orders the elves to retreat and directs Almanu to trap them in a circular stone wall. Then, the elves throw bombs into the trap making the armored guards real core. Scared that their elite core have been defeated, the soldiers close the gates immediately. However, the strategic Nobunaga comes up with a solution. He directs Almanu to create a step on the castle wall using her stone wall magic. This enables Nobunaga to scale through with some elves and infiltrate the castle walls. After taking out the soldiers, the elves go to free the dwarves, who get surprised that the elves saved them. Toyohisa decides to feed the dwarves in front of the castle by killing the warhorses. At this time, some of the soldiers retreat to the castle to stay safe and wait for help to come. He tells them that if they don't surrender before the dwarves are done eating, they would be next. They contemplate for a while and decide to surrender, but Toyohisa asks the lord of the castle to kill himself. He refuses and Toyohisa cuts his head off. Seeing how strong the drifters were and how strong the elves and dwarves were together, Count Saint Jeremy, a man with funny looks who owns a third of the kingdom of Ort and is a member of the upper class, comes to join them. When he arrives at the elven camp, he discovers that the drifters have not returned from the battle to free the dwarves. The octobris they had left behind informs the Count that they intend to produce firearms in large quantities to fight against Ort. This solidifies his stance on joining them. After the dwarves had finished eating, they ask Nobunaga for the gun he had earlier spoken about. Seeing it, they analyze it part by part. They ask Nobunaga why he needs a gun when it does the same thing with a bow an arrow. He gets dumbfounded unable to think of a good answer. Fortunately for him, Toyohisa comes to his aid, saying the strength of a gun is its battle cry and the fact that it is quick to train with. After barely a day, the dwarves hand Nobunaga the first gun they had made. He is surprised that they replicate something so complex in a short time. They assure him that they will be able to make 10 guns in a day. Meanwhile, Toyohisa tests the skills of the dwarves and finds their fighting style intriguing. While with them, Count Saint Jeremy arrives at the castle. He is thrilled that the drifters are able to form an alliance between the elves and the dwarves, and even replicate firearms. When asked why he had come, he says he came to finalize if the drifters are worth joining forces with. 
The Count believes his subordinates are evaluating Toyohisa to find out how strong he is. Unknown to him, his subordinates are actually weaklings with complicated weaknesses. Toyohisa brings them to their knees before their master, and he tells Toyohisa that he has come to sell Ort Empire to them while it still exists, as part of their plan to take over the capital of Ort. The Count plans a rebellion and sneaks them into the capital of Ort to carry it out. He calls a meeting of the nobles and tells them that he is going to shut down the kingdom. He says he intends to start a new kingdom with Toyohisa as the new leader. Hearing this, they are agitated and call on the guards to arrest the Count. Unknown to them, the guards have all been killed by Yoichi and the elves. While the nobles talk, one of them seems to be controlled by an end. He says that ultimate ruling power should be given to the Black King with everyone begging for his mercy. Realizing that this is the work of an end, the Count calls him out, Toyohisa arrives. Seeing him, the end calls in his evil soldiers and is confident that they would do harm. However, Toyohisa calls him bluff as he attacks the soldiers, wiping them out before his very eyes. This scares the end as he has just seen firsthand how powerful Toyohisa is. The end tries to act natural and introduce himself to Toyohisa. As he talks, Toyohisa approaches the noble whom he had earlier controlled and smashes his head multiple times. This end disappears in anger and informs the Black King about his latest outing, prompting him to dictate that their new objective shall be maximum destruction and chaos changing his goal from taking over the kingdom to destroying it completely. Court Saint Jeremy gives Toyohisa an offer of 500 men to defend the capital. In the meantime, the dwarves have finally been able to make 100 copies of the guns. Nobunaga is very happy to hear this, and he gives them to the men of Court Saint Jeremy to use. They get ready for an attack. Toyohisa leads the dwarves as foot soldiers, Yoichi leads the elves as archers, and Nobunaga leads the men with guns, ready to fight and defend the capital from the source of ultimate evil. Toyohisa slashes some of the enemy soldiers as they charge at him. Nobunaga's men fire their guns, throwing the enemy off because they have never seen a weapon like that before. After that, Yoichi's elven archers start shooting arrows at the soldiers from the rear, allowing Nobunaga's men to fire a second round of bullets which makes the soldiers trapped in confusion. This gives Toyohisa and his dwarves a chance to hit the soldiers with the final blow, making them run away and retreat. However, the soldiers didn't actually run away. Their leader Hijikata ordered them to split up into small groups and start fires all over the capital as a distraction. Fortunately, Nobunaga finds out about their plan in the end and sends a message to Toyohisa telling him to keep Hijikata busy while he comes up with the perfect strategy to counter their attacks. As a part of his plan to counter them, he orders everyone to empty the city and opens the capital gates, setting a trap for them. Seeing that the gates are wide open, the enemy soldiers rush in. Nobunaga directs Yoichi and her archers to rain arrows at them while his gunmen shoot their guns, killing them all. Toyohisa continues to fight Hijikata, who is in charge of the army of monsters that have been sent to attack them in a bid to keep him busy while Nobunaga puts his plan to kill all of the enemy soldiers into action. When it gets obvious that Hijikata is about to lose, the Black King tells him to quit, forcing him to retreat. While he flies away, Toyohisa screams the real battle has just begun. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.